We have a toolbox that's full of lots of tools, and I brought them all to the party, the party, the party. And given our dominance in the air and our capability to do significant damage to his ground forces, that each day, each week that goes by, he gets weaker and we get stronger. Party, 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 weaker and stronger. Party, toolbox, the party, party. Suppose those who made wars had to fight them. Suppose they had to do it all alone. Suppose those who made wars had to fight them. Then many of our sons could come home. Then many of our sons could come home. Of course, national polls do show that Americans now overwhelmingly support the war in the Gulf. Suppose they had to do it all alone. Suppose those who made wars had to fight them. Then many of our sons could In addition to attacking on the battlefield, he might possibly be able to get a few bombs at the population center or again use stop the wars dismantle this death machine why don't you ban the bombs stop the wars dismantle this death machine ban the bombs stop the wars dismantle this death machine then many of our sons could come home quality and type of reporting that we see on the TV network news and we want to call attention to this fact and gather together a lot of people we're going to go to various television stations in this city and in Oakland the major networks to point out we're not just singling out any station we're not media bashing we're just concerned with the lack of balance that we see a lot of times in reporting they should for their own sakes and for our sakes run a disclaimer on their reporting and say, we want you to know this news has now been censored by the U.S. government. It has been screened by military uh, representatives, et cetera, et cetera, and not just present it as news or not have any comment at all on a very, very serious thing where people's rights, and as far as I'm concerned, the First Amendment, the First Amendment is being violated. I do think there is self-imposed censorship as well, and, and we certainly don't like that. I think if advertisers weren't such a potent force, we wouldn't see a, such a huge difference between the major TV networks and, for example, KPFA or Deep Dish. There's such a huge difference, you really have to wonder. And the answer, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not an expert, but from what I know, the answer is advertisers. <laughs> We're brought to you tonight by your favorite shopping complex, Deep Floyd's R.S. 
Tonight's top story, terror continues to rain down on Israel this week after a series of kind and gentle surgical sorties against the butcher shop in Baghdad. But in general, the battle against the recession of uh, Iraqi forces continues to go well, with no people being killed, only Arabs. <laughs> this according to reports that have not yet been received. The Pentagon has announced it will withhold body counts in order to avoid getting bogged down in controversy. Uh, polls show 82% of Americans think controversy during wartime is a bad thing. Meanwhile, in Savannah, Georgia, a psychologist adds that watching too much war coverage on TV is emotionally unhealthy and advised people who are anxious about the war to turn off the news. He added they should also stay out of the streets and avoid writing letters to politicians. <laughs> The media will not be allowed to cover the arrival in the United States of human remains pouches from the war front. According to a spokesman at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware, since people who are not reported to have died should not be reported to have been buried. <laughs> uh, President Bush, visibly angered by Iraq's treatment of kind and gentle American fighter pilots, <laughs> declared that the whole world is sickened by Saddam's war crimes, with the possible exception of that part of the world that is uh, sickened by ours. He reiterated he will persevere and that Kuwait will once again be free, or at least that its oil will be cheap. <laughs> As the war moves toward the phase of ground war, in which actual people with pronounceable names might become casualized, Defense Secretary Dick Cheney assured the press that America had, quote, brought all the tools in the toolbox to the party. <laughs> Just as, uh, similarly, we had uh, brought party favors and the cake when relations with Iran were in need of repairs. The Iraqis have apparently become very skilled at concealing their military hardware and disguising common buildings and even rocks as strategic military targets. As a result, the U.S. has destroyed a number of cardboard tanks and avoided bombing runways which uh, had painted on them uh, bomb craters. <laughs> An army spokesman said the Iraqi tactic of using $29 worth of camouflage fabric to cover a rock and lure in a $1 million missile was inscrutable and probably a war crime. <laughs> and tonight there's going to be a demonstration at 5 p.m. at Tower Market. And the people of Berkeley shut down our Three times! I be under arrest when I haven't given a proper warning. You said you are, I say you are. You're under arrest. Okay. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. When was notice given? About 11 minutes ago. Okay. How? Verbal. How is it? How is it given out? Pardon me? How is it given out? Or should, are you the Microphone. person I should be talking to? No, I'm not talking to you. On that one corner. I want three feet between you and my line, pal. I was, try I was trying to get you out. Step back. I was trying to get out. The sidewalk, then. Where? I'm trying to get out. Where the sidewalk is? I'm trying to get out. Right there. Let's go bring the car.
Excuse me, what if we haven't received proper notice that we uh, to leave the area? Who do we talk to? Officer? Officer Sedano? Who do we talk to about not being given proper notice to get out? I've been in the middle of the crowd and haven't heard a thing. Officer Sedano? You can't direct me to someone to talk to? Sir, can you tell me how I can uh, ask someone about not being, excuse me. I haven't been given proper notice. Sir, this is an illegal arrest. That's how you guys do this, huh? Officer, who do I ask about proper notice having been given? Maybe you should give them attorney. What's up? Okay, this is going to be a long call. But I haven't been given proper notice at all. I didn't, I didn't hear the first thing about it until I was out here. Is that under arrest? Maybe you should give them an attorney. And what do you think about that process? What's that? What did they say? I didn't hear them. Can you just tell me that? Okay. Excuse me, officer. Am I allowed through here? No, stay here. Get in there. Why aren't I allowed out? They, but they came are. out of the building. You've been up there. Get out. No, of here. I was up taking pictures. I walked right in, and no. the police came you in right and behind you've been me. Ordered three times to leave. I honestly didn't hear. I don't want to argue with you. Just get back. I didn't hear it oh, until nice. the first notification. We'll see if people come out of the buildings or going. You've been down there. I was only down there after the policeman had come in. I didn't know I was under arrest until I was. Talk to the captain down contained. there. Don't talk to me. Who's the captain? down there with the, with the captain's star on. Which means, is that the guy with the hat? Right. To the officer? I was told to talk to the captain about getting out. I wasn't in a, I wasn't notified until you guys had already come in. Which one? This guy right here? What's his name, officer? What do we need to get out, officer? Press pass. What if we weren't given proper notice until you guys had already come in? You're staying in. You're in. You're all under arrest. You don't back up, you're going to be pushed back. Back up. Okay. Under arrest. Close it up. Close it up. Close it up. What, did you guys hear the uh, warning? No, we didn't. no, there wasn't any warning. Where were you? All left? Right. No. Right yeah, I was here. standing right out here. All I heard was you're under arrest. Right. They just showed up. Nikkei index in Tokyo, which is closed now, took a hit immediately after the announcement of the U.S. attack on Iraq. It ended up closing over a thousand points up, an increase of over four percent. In London, both gold and oil opened down, and the Financial Times index for stocks was well up. It is a kind of euphoria. This is all very good. We love it here. We love what's happening. Euphoria. Euphoria. Wall Street soared on a near record increase of more than 114 points. Today alone, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, oil prices went steadily down.
where they're pumping deadly toxic chemicals into our community from the Chevron refinery and the Chevron Auto pesticide facility. We are bombarded with benzene and methylene chloride and other deadly toxic emissions where there's a high rate of cancer, respiratory problems, and other health problems. So we're well aware of the toxic assault. We are already facing chemical warfare. Uh, I'm out here today because war is anti-human, inhumane, crazy, senseless, mass murder. And we certainly, in the 20th century, should be able to find other ways to settle our differences in a non-violent way and put our money to work addressing the social problems not only of this country, but of all the third world countries where they're having so much trouble and where there is a social unrest because they don't have the things they need, which lead to violence. And that's where we should be putting our money, not in a million dollar tomahawks that go off a hundred a day, and we can't afford $16 billion, you know, for to take care of starvation and immunization, and the 37 million people in this country who don't have any health coverage. It's, it's a disgrace to intelligence. It's the National Association of Broadcast Employees and Technicians, and we're the, we represent the union represented employees at KQED Channel 9 and 32 and the radio station KQED, and KGO, ABC in San Francisco, and KKHI radio station in San Francisco. I don't think the media has been doing a fair job covering the protests, and I think they, they're just the spokesmen for the government. We're uh, for the environment, and... Uh, in, in many ways, conservation, we think that uh, there's a big problem that we haven't had uh, uh, energy policy in this country, and it's long overdue. It was, uh, it was uh, really uh, um, totally dismantled by uh, Reagan administration, and uh, we don't hear anything about it now. So, okay. I am the secretary of... Uh, uh, two organizations, the uh, Vietnam Veterans of America, the San Francisco chapter, and uh, the United Bay Area Veterans against the war in the Middle East. We want this war to end, and we want the troops to lay down their weapons and to stop fighting. And uh, we, are, we are actively involved in counseling uh, active duty personnel who, ref who, who do refuse to, uh, to fight and to provide them with safe harbor uh, here in the United States. Because I don't want to see any more dead kids coming home. I don't want to see any more screwed up kids coming home and ending up like so many Vietnam vets did. 
you know, I'm one of the lucky ones. I've got a good life, I've, things are going well, but there's a lot of people that are still screwed up. They won't be calling it Vietnam Vet Syndrome, they'll be calling it Iraqi Syndrome, but it's the same thing. We gotta stop this. There's no reason for us to be there. to bring the you know the troops home I mean it's, you know this war is not a labor war it's not a war for labor not a war for minorities it's not a war for anything just a war for oil you know and oil doesn't you know doesn't do anything for us you know they, they don't pay taxes we pay the taxes you know they don't support any kind of social program or, or job program or anything anyway you know it's just corporate America at war mostly with itself. Who's going to get the best share of the oil? Nothing to do with labor or anything. It's sons and daughters of American workers who uh, do the dying. And it's for oil, it's for big oil, it's for power. And it's nothing that's in the long run interest of American workers. I feel like um, the government's not listening to us. And usually I'm not out here doing stuff like this, but uh, I feel like I'm so frustrated with the media coverage uh, and the deaf ears of the President and Congress that I, I need to come out here. If we can't feed people, house people, have a sane and stable infrastructure, that we don't have any success as engineers, we've completely blown our responsibility and our commitment to the well-being and welfare of the people of the world. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. So we are.
repeat this in another Vietnam. This is an historic moment. Another Vietnam. Over and over again, while the world called peace and withdrawal, our operations are proceeding according to plan. For the innocents caught in this conflict, I pray for their safety. Just the price of a gallon of gas. This is an historic moment. Unspeakable atrocities. And among those maimed and murdered, innocent children. Another Vietnam. Did you ever wonder how your federal tax dollar is spent? In 1989, 21 cents of your tax dollar was split between education, health and human services, and the labor department. Eight cents went towards affordable housing and protecting the environment. And while thousands of Americans lacked affordable health care, were homeless and hungry, 61 cents of your 1989 federal tax dollar was spent on the military. Is this how you want your money spent? This year you have a choice. Through the Alternative Revenue Service, individuals across the country are using the Easy Peace Form to turn their tax dollars from war to peace. Join a tax revolt for the 90s. Call for your Easy Peace Form today. one 800 955 Peace.